Now that we're familiar in the process of converting a network graph seen over here into its algebraic representation seen over here, let's have a look at how we can convert a more complicated graph. So over here, we've got a slightly more complicated network graph. What we can see is that the complication is coming from the additional nodes as well as the considerably more edges. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go through the process of converting this particular network graph here into its connectivity matrix. Now the process in converting this remains the same as what we had done previously. First step is we need to count all of our nodes in this particular graph. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're going to have an, a matrix that's of order seven by seven. I've already gone ahead and I've drawn a template in for the matrix here. Now, next step is I'm going to label the columns and the rows of my matrix. Now, one thing to, or one thing worth mentioning is that when you see some questions perhaps down the track for this particular sort of math, there's a good chance that your connectivity matrix isn't going to be labeled as such. The labeling is just some additional information I like to put on them purely because it makes them easier to read. So you're less prone to making mistakes when you're generating them. Now, if you see a connectivity matrix without the letters on top of it, you can just assume that all of the letters that you see in the diagram itself are going to be in alphabetical order over here. Just something to keep in mind. Now, next step is we want to start analyzing the edges or how the nodes are related to one another. So how the edges are all configured. Now, starting off from, let's say, node A, what we want to do is we want to see where we can travel to starting from node A. Now, the first edge we're going to travel along is this guy over here. So we've got one option to get to C, two options to get to C, then three options to get down to C. As a result, starting from A and finishing at C, we have three edges we may travel upon. Going across, we have B. From B, we only have one option or one destination using a single hop. We may travel up towards C. Moving across one more, we have C. From C, we have a number of different destinations. First one being B. We have one option to get from C down to B. We have three options to go from C upwards to A. And finally, we have two edges that are going to take us from C across to D. Worth noting is that in all of these examples here, there's no way in which we can travel from our starting node back to our starting node again. So from A and A to A, it's not possible. B to B, it's not possible. C to C, it's not possible. And all of the other nodes, you're going to find it's the same. Now moving across from C, we go across to D. D has a number of options we can travel to. First one being is we're able to travel from D across to C. We're able to travel from D up to E, from D across to F, and from D we have two ways in which we may go to G. Filling in the matrix, going from node E, we're able to travel down to D. This is the only option we have for E. Moving across to F. For F, there are two destinations. The first destination is D and the second destination is G. And then this takes us to our final node. From G, we have two destinations. The first destination is F. And then the second destination is D, where there are two edges taking us from G up to D. Filling in the connectivity matrix accordingly. We're going to go from G to D, there are two options. And from G to F, we have a singular option like so. Filling in the rest of the matrix. So this is our completed connectivity matrix for this particular diagram over here. Now, looking at what this connectivity matrix actually is communicating to us, it's simply an algebraic representation of what we have illustrated in the graphics over here. Now, the interesting thing is the 
Connectivity Matrix tells us where we can go to starting from a particular node using only a single hop across a single edge. Now the next question is, what about if we're able to travel more than a single hop? What if we're able to travel multiple hops across so two edges? What if we want to hop three times across three edges? So the next logical thing to learn after this singular connectivity matrix is a connectivity matrix that tells us multiple hops. Now the next logical one on top of this is our second order connectivity matrix or a connectivity matrix that tells us where we can get to starting from a particular node using two hops across two edges. What I'm going to do to set this up is I'm going to move this diagram slightly to the left over here to preserve the colors and then I'm going to do another diagram over here. Now to be able to complete or to be able to create a second order connectivity matrix what we do is it's very similar to creating a first order. What we'll do is we count all of our nodes. Now, obviously our nodes aren't going to change, so we're still going to have seven nodes and therefore we're going to have a second seven, seven order or seventh order connectivity matrix. So we go seven by seven and rather than C, we say C to the power of two, as in C second order. Now, the next thing we do to start completing this matrix is we have to have a look at how everything's going to connect together. Now, looking at this, we're going to start from node B. And what our objective is, is to see where we can get to starting from node B using two hops. Now, to represent a single or the first hop, I'm going to use the green highlighter here. So we're able to travel from B upwards towards C. Now from C, I'm going to represent it in its blue highlighter. We're able to travel from C across to A, not once, not twice, but in three unique ways. Consequently, the route from B to A, there's three ways in which we can get there. So I'm going to put a three. Furthermore, from B traveling to C, we're also able to get to D and D. So there's two ways in which we can get from B across to D. So A, B, C, D. And finally, from B, we're able to travel up to C and then do a U-turn and travel back down to B again. So there's one way in which we can get from B and finish it B or finish at B. So three, one and two. So this concludes all of the routes we can take or all of the destinations we can get to from B and the amount of rats we can take to get there. Now let's turn our attention to something slightly more exotic. Let's turn our attention to A. From A, we have the option of traveling down to C. And from C, we have the option of getting to B. Now going from A to C and then C across to B, Looking at all the routes we can take from A to get to C, this means that to go from A to C down to B, there's going to be three ways. So as a result, to get from A to B, we have three different options. To get from A to C and then across to D, we have three ways to get to C and then a further two ways to get to D. So as a result, to get from A to D, we have six options. And finally, Going from A, we're able to go from A across to C and then back across to A again. So going from A, finishing at A. To get from A down to C, we have three options. And to get from C back to A, we have another three options. So we're able to go three times three, like so. As a result, to go to A from A, we have nine unique ways. Now moving across. Let's go to something slightly different. Let's go to G. From G, we have the option of traveling upwards towards F, cross to D, and if we're going to D, we have two ways. Now from F, we are able to travel. So from G to F, we are able to travel back to G or across to D. Furthermore, from G traveling to D, we are able to travel back down to G or we are able to travel across to F, across to C using two unique ways, or upwards to E. So as a result, starting from G, there are quite a number of different nodes we can end up at. So firstly, to 
start at G and finish at F, we have the option of going one, so up to F and back down to G, or we can go from G up to D and then back down to G again. Now, more interestingly, to go from G to D, there's two ways to get to D and another two ways to get back to G. So there's four ways to travel from D to G, plus an additional way to go from G to F back to G. So there's five places we can go to, G to G. To go from G across to D, there's going to be one route. So you have to go from G up to F and then across to D. And then to go from G to finish at F, we have to go up to D using two routes and then there's a single route to get across to F. To go from G across to C, there's going to be two routes to get to D and another two routes to get to C. So that's going to yield four unique ways to go from G across to C. And finally, to go from G up to E, we have two rats. So you can go two rats to get to D, and then the single rat to get to E. So therefore, there's two ways. Finishing this, or the rows of this matrix off. Now, what you can likely see here is that completing the second order connectivity matrix is a rather tedious job. Now, fortunately for us, there's a way in which we can automate this. Provided we have the first order connectivity matrix already hooked up, we're able to generate second order and upwards using our calculators. Now the way in which we do this is we bring our calculator up like so. And what we do is we're going to key in our matrix. Now for time's sake, I've already gone ahead and I've keyed in the first order connectivity matrix here. Now to generate the second order connectivity matrix, all we need to do is we simply go to option, F2, map, then I'm going to put it in parentheses, map A, referencing the matrix or the first connectivity matrix, and then I'm going to square it. And what this will yield is our second order connectivity matrix like so. Now the tricky thing about Putting in the matrices here is that when we're working with matrices of really high order, there's quite a lot of information com or communicated on the screen, more information that we can actually fit on a single screen. So what you want to do is you want to think of a strategy of how you can get all of this information shown here directly onto your page here. Now in this case, it gives us four columns and five rows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the information shown here into the information inside the matrix here in blocks. So start off with 9306, 3102, 0014, 0. All right, now that I've finished the first block of information, I'll move it down to complete the sixth row like so. Now going back up to the top, zoom it all the way across, and then we'll go down one, two, so starting from the third row. So what you can see is if I've already made a mistake here. So I'm going to start the entire thing again. So zero, 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 going down one, two, two, four. So what you probably notice is that it's very easy to make a mistake when you're transferring the information from your calculator to your, to your working out here. So just be mindful to check over your values and do it in a systematic way. That way you're less likely to make an error and if you do you're more prone to picking it up. An error in one of these matrices here will spoil all of your results going forward and in a topic like this where it's quite difficult to understand what people are doing and it's either going to be pretty much it's either going to be right or wrong you don't want to make a mistake or otherwise everything will be wrong. Now Going back, what we've been able to do here is we've been able to generate our second order connectivity matrix. That being a matrix that's going to tell us where we can get to starting from a particular node if we're allowed to travel across two edges at a time. Now on top of this, we can also do third order, fourth order, fifth order, sixth order. Uh, we can go up to an infinite amount depending on how much information we want to generate and how useful the data becomes. Now to be able to get matrices of higher orders, all you need to is change it from say a squared if you want to do a third order we have a third order if you want to do a fourth order we have fourth order and if you want to do a fifth order you have fifth order so notice how the 
amount of options we or the amount of edges we can travel across to end up at A starting or to end up at C starting from A is you have 660 different ways. So this seems to make sense as the more hops you have, the more destinations you're going to have and the more routes you can take.